So I'm here with Ron from uh, Mutual Materials, and you might remember earlier this year, Ron, we talked about installing a, um, a wall, which you went over the steps with that. Right. And part of the whole plan here was putting in a pathway after that was done, which we're standing on now, and it's really yeah. quite beautiful. Oh, it turned out wonderful. Well, yeah, you know, I, before we get into the basics of how you did this, you know, before this was a big stone pathway, heavy rocks, mm -hmm. and it's not that that wasn't beautiful, but it really wasn't functional at all for like lawnmowers, garbage cans, uh, the friends that these people have that, that are in a wheelchair too. Yeah. This is much more functional. Yeah, very even laid, which is very nice, unlike natural stone in many cases where you have a lot of bumps and such, and also very uneven because they're not really pieced together very Correct. closely. And weeds. <laughs> yes, and weeds, you betcha, definitely. definitely. So now, this, this is a project, and it, it does take some work and some effort, but it really is pretty simplistic, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is very simplistic, actually. When you get down to it, uh, once you have your mindset on what you want to do and how, what you want to accomplish throughout this, the functionality of it is really the component of, that you really need to work with, and, and how are you going to use this, why you want it, and such so that you can design it for that purpose or those purposes. And so, you know, in this instance, uh, basically you go through and you dig out the area that you want. You've chosen the pavers already, the style and look you want. You dig it out, usually about six inches, four to six inches wider than you want to on either side because of the edging material that you put down yeah. here to keep everything into place. And so once you've done that, then you go ahead and set your edging uh, at least on one or two sides depending on the design and uh, start laying your pavers from the low side up. Mm -hmm. You always start on the low side and work your way up. With uh, gravel, first you have now, a see, quarter minus something crushed. That, that I was surprised yes. at because yes. I thought in a light use area, you wouldn't put gravel, but you're telling me, no, no, you start with gravel. Definitely have to have gravel under there. That's mainly for two reasons. Number one, stability of the soil, mm -hmm. the subgrade soil. You don't know once water gets introduced to it, obviously, you know, we get a lot of saturation. In the Northwest, come yeah, on. Yeah, <laughs> I know, it happens, I don't know why. <laughs> But uh, the, the soils, especially if they're clay, have a lot of clay in them, then that provides a lot of movement underneath mm -hmm. there. So that gravel actually acts as a stabilizer between that kind of like clay a stuff. Fork. Right. And so that actually can have the water in there, have a little reservoir of water as it slowly moves in. And then also it just stabilizes that whole area because you do compact it. Usually for something like this, you need maybe three or four inches mm -hmm. of crushed rock, usually three quarter minus or five-eighths minus. And then you compact that down, you tamp it down nice and hard, and then uh, put about an inch, inch and a half of washed concrete sand. Mm -hmm. So that's a certain granular sand that's washed, it's clean, uh, but it has varied gradation of particles in there. So mm -hmm. that again, locks it into place really well. So you screed that on top of the compacted gravel, and then you start laying your pavers again on the low side, working your way up. And lay in the pattern that you want, Make sure your edging is holding everything into place, and then you compact the pavers on top again, going ahead and running the plate compactor or whatever you're using on there, and then go ahead and fill the joints with sand as well. Run it over it again, fill it again, making sure that the jo joints are completely full from bottom to top. That's the main idea. And then, you know, it, it, once it's done, it really is a stable surface. Very stable, yes. Again, using those components provides for stability from the side and from underneath. And from underneath. Works really well. Well, you know, it's, it, it really added a lot of beauty to this yard, and it's, such, it's so much more functional than what they had before. For more information, you go to gardentime.tv, and we'll click you over to their website. But uh, all kinds of great information from mutual materials and, and really figuring out how you can make hardscaping a, an integral part of your garden. Thanks so much, Ron. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it.